What's up, traders, and welcome to the Market Bear Metrics Fundamental Analysis Crash Course. I'm your host, Neil Lyons, and over the next several videos, we're going to be learning about all things fundamental analysis, FA for short. Now, when you gain an understanding of how to conduct FA, you can really dive deep into understanding the value and potential investment opportunity in publicly traded companies. It's going to help you make smarter investment decisions. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to make smart investment decisions decisions so we can consistently grow our wealth through time. In my opinion, FA is overlooked by far too many individual investors. And that probably has a lot to do with the fact that it's traditionally been pretty difficult to perform a thorough fundamental analysis because it first requires you to gain a ton of understanding as to how to perform FA. What information do you need and what information matters? On top of that, it's been really hard to find all that information and to put it together in a succinct way that lends to the development of deeper insights. And that's what Market Barometrics and the Market Barometer is all about. It's about providing the tools that you need to perform thorough analysis to gain an understanding of the investment opportunities that are available to you in the market. Working through this video series, you're going to learn all about what you need to know, what you need to be looking for. You're going to have access access to all that information through the market barometer and you'll always have free lifetime access to these tutorials to refer back to. We want to help you develop your understanding of FA to become a better, more sophisticated, more informed investor and one that has all the tools and knowledge at their disposal to make smarter investment decisions. So without further ado, let's jump in and talk a little bit more about fundamental analysis. In short, fundamental analysis is the study of the underlying factors affecting the share price of a company in an attempt to determine the fair market value, aka intrinsic value, of a given stock. There's two main categories of fundamental analysis, qualitative FA and quantitative FA. Now, qualitative FA refers to intangible business characteristics, those characteristics of a company that are hard to estimate the value of, but certainly add value to a company. Think of Coca-Cola. The Coke brand has a ton of value, but there's really no way to take a hard measure of the value of the Coke brand itself. But it certainly does have value, and it means something to the share price of the company. Another potent form of qualitative FA might be management's discussion in the financial reports. In many financial reports, there's a section dedicated to the discussion from management regarding the future prospects and risks that a company foresees in its future. There's no real way to measure the value of potential future scenarios, but they certainly do affect shareholders' perceptions of the value of a company, which in turn influences share price. Quantitative analysis, on the other hand, refers to measurable numerical characteristics gathered from a firm's quarterly and annual financial reports. These financial reports have a ton of different components, but a few of which are the financial statements, specifically the income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. And we're going to be utilizing those three financial statements to do most of our quantitative FA. These statements are going to provide us with hard data, measurable statistics, statistical evidence as to company performance. And that's where the market barometer software comes into play. It's going to help us to gauge the performance of these companies by laying out that quantitative information in a way that lends to understanding, that leads to insights into business performance and what we might expect to happen with that company in the future. Now, before we dive into the financial statements in particular and how we're going to use those to gauge performance, let's lay a little groundwork by talking about the financial reports in general that that publicly traded companies here in the United States are required to file with the Securities Exchange Commission, the SEC. The first of the financial reports that we're going to talk about is the 10K. Now, U.S. public companies are required to submit their 10K filing once a year. So this is their annual filing with the SEC. It's a more comprehensive report consisting of five main sections. You get an overview of the company's main operations, risk factors, selected financial data, management discussion and analysis, and then you get the financial statements and supplementary data. And these are going to include the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. 
Beyond that, we have the quarterly filing. This is known as the 10Q. It's a condensed version of the annual 10K filing and includes condensed financial statements and management discussion and analysis. Now the 10K and the 10Q are both the required filings to the Securities Exchange Commission, but many publicly traded companies also create and make available an annual report. Now, this report is generated voluntarily by a company. It's usually made available on their website. And you can think of the annual report as something of a brochure to keep existing shareholders up to date on the goings on of the business operations, as well as a way to attract new investors. So you'll often find selected financial data within the annual report, but realize that an annual report does not have any regulatory requirements or restrictions and is generally aimed at painting the company in a favorable light. So there are several components of each of these financial reports, but specific to this crash course, we're focusing on quantitative fundamental analysis. As such, we'll be focusing on the financial statements, specifically the income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. Each of these financial statements is going to give us a unique look into the current performance and financial state of a given publicly traded company. And when we put the various metrics from each of the financial statements together in different ways, they give us insights into the current financial condition of these companies. They help us to form a narrative as to the key factors driving performance, and they're going to help us to gain an understanding of the relative attractiveness of any given company as far as an investment opportunity is concerned. So there are three main ways in which we're going to evaluate these financial statements. First of all, we're going to employ financial ratios. Now, a financial ratio just takes the relative value of one financial statement item to another. So an example is the net income divided by revenue is going to give us the net profit margin. Now, a financial ratio like net profit margin helps us to answer a very specific question. In this case, how profitable is this company as far as how much net income are they generating relative to the revenue that they're bringing in? Now, there are all kinds of different financial ratios that are going to help us to answer all kinds of different questions, each of which is going to provide us one more clue as to the current financial condition of a company. So financial ratios help us to answer specific questions about company performance. It's just as important to understand the changing trends in company performance. And that's the second way in which we evaluate these financial statements is through the trends. The trends in both the specific metrics from the financial statements and the trends in the financial ratios themselves. So whereas looking at a financial ratio like net profit margin is going to help us answer a question like how profitable is this company right now? When we look at the trend in that financial ratio over the span of several quarters, several years, we get a better understanding of is this company becoming more profitable or less profitable? Now all of a sudden we're forming a narrative and this can help lead us to even more insightful questions like, okay, well, why is this company becoming more profitable? Is it because they are becoming more more efficient at you know, producing the products that they're generating their revenues with. Maybe a reduction in taxes has led to a boost in net income relative to revenue. These are the kinds of questions that really help us understand a business and understand what kind of investment opportunity it offers. Lastly, the third and final way that we'll be evaluating the financial statements of these companies is by putting all the information that we've already gained into context. Now, it's important to understand that the relative levels of these financial ratios and trends is going to vary widely from sector to sector and industry to industry. So it's important to evaluate the level of these financial ratios in the context of a company's competitors. And that's where the market barometer really shines as far as the quantitative fundamental analysis. It's going to help us to evaluate the financial statements by looking at the financial ratios, the trends in those financial ratios, and how those things measure up relative to industry sector and market averages. So we can really understand what these numbers are telling us at a glance. There you go, folks, a quick introduction to fundamental analysis and the work that we're going to be doing over the course of this video series. We talked about the categories of FA, qualitative and quantitative analysis. We also talked about the various financial reports that are required to be submitted by publicly traded companies here in the United States, specifically the 10K and the 10Q. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the financial statements that are one of the components of the financial reports, specifically 
briefly, we're going to go over the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. We're going to talk about the structure of these statements, the information that's made available on these statements, and how we're going to use that to help us determine the value of these companies and to make smarter investment decisions. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, comments down below, and until next time, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.